Thank you for joining us to another uh, voice tutorial. Here I am with Miss Victoria, which is going to be helping us on the song Nobody Like You. We're going to give you five tips for all of our students and anyone out there that is trying to learn this song, is trying to get better at it. And it's a song that would you say, what is the level of difficulty from one to ten? I think seven, six, seven because of the harmonies. Yes, it's a song that sometimes people, because it's Disney, they believe that Disney is almost like four kids and because it's four kids, it's going to be easy. But that's not really the case with almost anything by Disney. So it is music that you just have to be aware of very specific things. Some of them we're going to share with you, just trying to help you get to learn this song in the best way possible. So our first tip is to go ahead and print uh, the lyrics for the song. And we actually have a download link so you guys can get the ones that we use here at the Hit Music Studio because we believe that this is a true advantage than trying to read the lyrics from a karaoke track or from a karaoke video. What would you say that's not the best way to go to use the lyrics that come up on the screen in a karaoke video? Because sometimes it doesn't line up with the song and so you're like, waiting to read the lyric from the karaoke, but the song has already passed that entrance. Like Yes, passed. as a musician, you have to be thinking ahead. So you have to be thinking before you hit the chorus on your notes. So what is your first uh, line? How are you going to say it? You know, breath and all that. So if yeah. you are always relying on the lyrics coming up on the screen, chances are your practice routine is not going to be that efficient. So always print lyrics. It's good to use a karaoke track for the audio side of things, but don't use it for the visual side of things. And yeah. try to print the lyrics, get the, get our lyrics so you can use them for multiple things, including we're going to be sharing the breath marks. And what would you say in this song? Do you have a lot of very specific breath marks? Is it kind of complicated to breathe in any of the parts of the song? Um, I wouldn't say so because there's like pauses. It just like it naturally pauses melodically, so it might it might it might be like obvious breaths, but we still mark them because some of them are in weird places yes. like, or weird words. So yeah, of course, it's and, it, and, it's, it. and it's a very good reminder of like almost keeping the the pace of the song. The song is a dance song. That's true. Dance song sometimes you don't have that much issues with breathing because the it's a little bit more punchy. You have places mm. that you can breathe and not kind of like cut out the melody, yeah. but it's definitely good to like know where those are. Tip number two has to do with the release of the notes. When you're singing a dance song, it's very important not to leave the releases of the song. That's when you're stopping the note to just be random. One of the things that we will say, study the song and almost pay attention to where the singers are taking the notes a little bit longer or making them shorter. So if we can maybe talk a little bit about the verse and yeah. the points in which the, the notes that are being hold and some of the notes are a little bit shorter. So what would you say is a good example of that? On the second line, had friends and I've had buddies. It's true. Notice if I were to cut buddy short, this is how it would sound like. Have friends and I've had buddy. It's true. It's like an empty space. So you want to um, release in time. Yes, yes. And the releases are equally important sometimes as the moment that the note comes in. That's true. Especially in a song that has energy. Mm -hmm. So when the releases are done incorrectly in a place that it doesn't really help, or one fit. of the things that, yeah, one of the things is like you hear someone singing and it's like, yeah, it doesn't sound right, but you mm -hmm. can't really put your finger on what. So make sure that not only your rhythms are correct into the start of the notes, but also in the releases of the notes yeah. and making some of the notes that need to be longer to actually be like that. Mm -hmm. We can even write it on the sheet music or on the on the lyrics and put like okay you know i need to hold for example like i think that's a perfect on the first verse we need to hold what buddies we need to hold tummy yeah and uh they don't turn my tummy the way you do yeah tell me what it's to almost be. like you do it is shorter so that mm. do it's a little bit shorter to give it more punch but tummy is not and yeah. those are the things that when you're just kind of like didn't pay too much attention. You heard it on the movie a couple of times and you just start singing the song. Mm -hmm. It may not resemble exactly how it's supposed to be. Yeah. Tip number three has to do with learning your starting pitch. And I think this is something that takes you away from being just someone that likes the song and sings it in the shower to someone that is actually studying the song so you can get better at it. Now, one of the things that I would recommend is that you buy a cheap keyboard. That way when you're practicing vocals, you have a way to plug the notes. <laughs> 
mm-hmm. and just be able to like at least get the starting point for the verse, for the chorus, and that way we're going to give you a couple so you can get almost started. So let me put a, almost like a solo version here of Miss Victoria and the keyboard, <laughs> and we're going to talk about the verse. The verse, the first two notes are A and E. So if you can almost start singing there, I never, I, I never met nobody. Never met no. Okay, ready. Never met nobody. So one thing that you can do is when you have a karaoke track, the karaoke track is playing. When the, that part is coming, you can take that note and play those yeah. two notes as a way to get almost like a starting place in which you have a little bit of help. But this is what actually makes means to uh, study a song. Yeah. Now that also try almost usually will get you in a place and when you start singing the song you're already on a on a good track now can we talk about what will be the first two notes for the chorus so that's actually a a and d so if we can do that's the you're never not on my mind you're never not on my mind so if you once again just plug those two notes on a on a simple keyboard it's going to almost get you to the place that you're starting. And let's talk about briefly, what is the note that we believe it's uh, sang on the rap? An A. Uh, the rap is this. So if we can Let's call it, it what it is. It's a masterpiece. <laughs> okay. So one of the things that is important is that you want to almost do these things as a way to ensure that you're actually paying attention to the details in a song. Yeah. When you don't and some of the notes are off and your starting place may be, I don't know, a little bit like higher or lower, mm. this happens to, to, to some singers. When your starting place may be off, then sometimes the whole the whole chorus yeah. is off or the whole song can be off. That's true. So you want to almost like imagine what the note is, pluck it from a keyboard mm-hmm. uh, until you get it strong and secure enough that you can start that note from memory so that's definitely a really good point to try to do on every song but definitely on this one as well now let's talk a little bit about the rap raps are something that i really believe every singer should know how to do because you're going to be required to do raps if you want to be in the music industry one of the things is that sometimes for example in this case the let's call it what it is is a masterpiece isn't about that range right can you hit that range Let's call it what it is. It's a masterpiece. Yeah. But okay, for... but she may not sound that natural. No, no, she it does it no. in that range. So <laughs> one thing is that you want to adapt the rap to the to a note and a place that sounds good for you. No. That's not to say that you should be like, oh, I don't do raps because the rap is too low. I think that's not the no. right attitude as a singer. Mm-hmm. I think you should be like, sure, I can do it. Now, well, how would you do it? Could you change the note? Would you do it a little bit higher? Well, I I tried it an octave higher and I liked it. So okay. but well, I don't. You I don't... wanna you wanna show them a little bit? Well, I mean. Wait, yeah, play. So. This is an A. Ready? Let's call it what it is. It's a masterpiece. Got a whole lot of love for them city streets. <laughs> yeah. So something I think like that, that. that something like that could work. It can give it a little bit more energy. And I think it's important yeah. when you're singing this type of songs, you should not necessarily just try to copy what was done in the recording. You yes. don't know who recorded what. You don't know what their background mm-hmm. is, what their strong suit is. Try to find things that work for you. Mm-hmm. Still paying attention to what the song has. You don't want to just take a song and like, yeah. completely transform it. <laughs> but you definitely want to also adapt it to what you can do and what sounds good on you so finally we have an important tip and i think this was one that is almost like fairly obvious for any song which is mm-hmm. to memorize the lyrics yeah why would you say it's important to memorize the lyrics and not only be even me looking f- at them from some kind of like sheet music that you have or like some printout so once you have the lyrics memorized you can then focus on other things that would make your performance of it better like artistry wise and maybe you can be more comfortable with the feel of the song instead of worrying less about the lyrics. Maybe you can focus on your support and your technique and stuff like that. Absolutely. And in this one, the chorus, would you say it's a little bit of a like tongue twister? It's like it's kind of like wordy a little bit. And I, I think so it. Much- I think it is wordy. I think you gotta. Um, get the words out you have to get them out it's worthy and it's almost like some of them repeat but not necessarily always yeah. the same so it's yeah. kind of like you say the <laughs> yeah, wrong yeah. one here or there <laughs> but it's part of the of the fun of learning yeah. songs like this so we definitely want to thank Miss Victoria for her time for being a part of tutorials like this. Hopefully you guys got a little bit of value of this five tips into how to learn nobody like you. And at the same time, we want to encourage you guys to visit our main website, thehitmusicstudio.com if you guys have any question or would like to know a little bit more of what we do here at The Hit. We'll see you guys on the next one. Bye.